Hello again, this is Mad Marty, and this is a casual gamer's review to Transformers Devastation for the PS4 on Mad Respect TV. Released by Activision in 2015 for the home consoles, I admit I was excited for this game. So excited I reserved a copy at my local GameStop as if it was gaming back in 2002. You see, despite being a childhood icon, up until then, the G1 Transformer fans were never blessed with a worthy game until that year. Yes, this game may be a little old to review, but I don't care. It's G1, and I have the time now, so let's get started. For this review, despite its age, I do not plan on doing a ton of spoilers. I think in this case it's just best to go with simple pros versus cons, and toss in a few random thoughts. To begin with the pros, Devastation really captures the original spirit of the G1 cartoon series. This is aided in the fact that many of the surviving voice actors return in their original roles, that including uh, Peter Cullen, Frank Welker, Greg Berger, Michael Bell, as well as some others. The art style is also an interesting choice to say the least, but it works well. The game itself uh, has the feel of a fairly typical Transformers episode of the early 80s. Another quick pro, I was very satisfied with the cast of Decepticons. I don't want to give them all away, but let's just say I was really happy with it. The use of Purple Seekers was a nice touch. The Autobots on the other hand, well, we'll get to that. Counting this as a pro, the combat system, at least for a casual gamer, is fun. Very easy to learn, there's not a ton of depth, but this is a hack and slash game. Uh, ranged weapons had their place in this game, but the combat is definitely melee focused. In my opinion, Transformers Devastation has great replay value. This is actually due to multiple difficulty settings, uh, different secrets to find, and there is a weapons upgrade feature that compels a player uh, to revisit the game. Gear drops, while common, most of the best stuff will actually drop on the hardest modes. Fortunately, gear may be acquired in any game mode. Uh, spare weapons can also be used to upgrade your arsenal. Nothing goes to waste, so you can con continuously find new ways to experiment with weapons and gear. The challenge mode offers a little more depth of the game, and even has this weird punt the Decepticon game as if you were kicking field goals with Decepticon jets. That said, I never really got the hang of it, so I'm not going to bother with recording a clip. If you really want to see it, I encourage you to check it out and have a blast. With the game having so many collectibles throughout the course of the game, as you collect these secrets, you actually do get to unlock some real sweet art. One real nice thing to see was some of the original Transformers art that you would see when you would buy a Transformer toy. Very well done, Hasbro. Very well done. Finally, I'm just throwing this in there. I love the Shockwave battle. Which is weird to say because Shockwave was hardly my favorite as a kid. But in my adult years, there's just such an appeal. Who knows, maybe he's a grown-up Decepticon. Now that we've discussed the pros, it's time to now discuss the cons. <laughs> cons. Let's go ahead and start with the small gripes first. The most common cons you'll hear about this game, at least from what I've read, is that the game is short, combat is repetitive, and the camera angles kind of suck. This is true, true, and true. Most of the fanboys, though, they just won't care. Personally, though, I think in this day and age, expectations may be too high in the world of gaming. And some critics out there, and I'm not saying everybody, but I almost wonder if they tend to forget to have fun when they're playing games if it doesn't fit a certain mold. I've probably beaten this game from start to finish 25 times, but I don't think it's out of fanboy love. Innocently enough to me, I think it's just fun to play. And I would have detonated in joy if my six-year-old self saw this. Admittedly, the stages are a little meh because so much of it is recycled throughout the story. This was a missed opportunity and maybe some more Cybertronian landscape was in order. Speaking of recycled, I hate Insecticons, and there's a ton of them. Especially in the harder settings. I mean, they work well for the plot, and I'm glad they're in the game. I simply hate fighting the dang things. It's annoying. Just as annoying as hearing everyone saying, Hail Hydra in the Marvel movies. Yeah, that's convenient. 
In this game, it's just like, yay, more Insecticons. Even in the show, I wasn't a fan. No. And now for my biggest gripe. Here it goes. Why Activision? Why Hasbro did you not take advantage of me through downloadable content? Hasbro, you got away with this for years in the 80s by selling more toys with simple repaints. And you couldn't do it here? I mean, yeah, you had a few extra skins in the game, but you could have sucked away probably an additional 100, 200, maybe even 300 dollars out of me if you just added more Autobots, stages, playable Decepticons, anything. I will pay for Jazz, I will pay for Ratchet, Prowl, Hound, even Hot Rod. Take my money. Well, I guess it's Hasbro's and PlayStation's loss, I guess. I mean, fortunately though, thanks to the gallery, many absentee characters are still immortalized and not forgotten. And now, let's talk characters in terms of my most favorite Autobot to my least favorite. Number one favorite, Sideswipe. I know a lot of diehard Sideswipe fans out there. I'm not personally one of them, but they would be pleased. He is my good, all-purpose Autobot. Good weapon selection, good speed, great ramming attacks, and a great special attack. He's definitely the Autobot I like to go cruising around town with. Number two favorite, Wheeljack. It's fitting that he's in this game considering he is the first on-panel Transformer ever seen in the entire franchise. He's not as maneuverable as Sideswipe, although this could be due to the weapon types I equip him with. Wheeljack can use a lot of the heavier weapons in the game and I do take advantage of that, including the use of Megatron's Fusion Cannon. It's a lot of fun to use. He also has a special shield ability that I almost never use, but he does have my favorite special attack that can either freeze or blow the heck out of my enemies. Speaking of Wheeljack, his character also creates mini enhancement chips for your other Autobots which can be used to gain additional stats and abilities. It's actually more of a mini game. Unfortunately I would never quite understood it and it's too unpredictable for me to care about when looking at the entire big picture. Number three favorite, Bumblebee. Another must for the game when you factor in the franchise itself. He's a quick little guy and he has this neat little slide ability that allows him to slide under a foe's legs. Arsenal options are more average with him, but my biggest issue with Bumblebee is once you buff him up enough, and believe me you can, he'll be able to stand toe to toe with Megatron or even Devastator. The fanboy in me tells me that this is not okay. Number four favorite, Optimus Prime. Like Stan Bush says, he has the power, but I'm not so sure about the touch. Prime just feels a little clunkier than the others mentioned so far. He does have a good arsenal and special attacks, including a pretty neat trailer swipe, but he seems to not be as fluid as some of the other Autobots, which makes sense, but just makes him a little less fun to play. And my number five favorite, Grimlock. I like Grimlock as much as the next guy, but I hate playing him in this game. His dino mode just doesn't have maneuvering capability that the rest of the Autobots have, and it almost feels like you're playing with a handicap when you're using Grimlock. Maybe I just suck with him. I'm not sure. I do tend to equip him with the heaviest weapons, but I don't think it does the Dinobot leader any favors. Strangely enough, though, I do have them in a lot of clips. So, is this game worth getting? In my opinion, absolutely. The problem is I believe Hasbro's licensing agreement ran out, so there may be issues finding it going forward. That said, love the game, and I'm glad to have it in my collection. My childhood is now complete. Thanks for watching. This is Mad Marty reminding you to do what's responsible. Avoid what's irresponsible, make the most with what you got, and get respect. Mad respect. See you next time.